Mark, which is in the New Testament, chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. And really it's the Easter story where Mary Magdalene came to the, the tomb. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for in terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. I'm sure God will add a blessing to the reading of that word. Thank you very much, Peter. um, Just as we prepare to think about that, let's pray and ask God um, to speak to us. Father, your holy word has power to change our lives. We pray that your living power would be present in this church this morning and would touch our hearts and lead us into life in all its fullness. Amen. Well, it's Easter Day, so I thought I'd do a quiz for you all. And it's a sports quiz. Apologies if you hate sport. But um, here it is. And also, you guys are too good at most of the quizzes I do, so I've ramped it up a bit this year, okay? So this is quite a tough quiz, I think. I'm going to show you a logo, and you've got to tell me which sport team it represents. Okay? It starts easier, gets harder. So here's the first one. That's cheating if you're a scouser, but yes. Let's hear, who do you think it is? I'll come and run around. Who do you think that logo is? Liverpool. Liverpool Football Club, that's right. Jasper, are you wearing a Liverpool strip today? Did I see? Is Jasper here? Are you, look at that. Do you want to come and show everyone at the front? Or are you happy just standing on the pew? We, we even have a living example here. Well done, Jasper. Do you want to stand here? I'll be so impressed if there's a logo in church for every one of these. So, correct. If we do the reveal, next slide, Liverpool Football Club. Okay, here's the second one. Does anyone know that logo? We've got one person, two. We've got, oh, we've got someone shouting out over there. Who I think got it right? New England Patriots. Very good. English accent as well. So you're not from New England. Wonderful. Let's have a look. And you were right over there. It is the New England Patriots, who are an American football team, um, for anyone who uh, didn't know. Okay, number three. Now, I know it's England, but which England sports team is it? Football. Football, cricket. Anyone want to guess? Okay, you come over. Let's pass it. Say what you think it is. England cricket team. It is the England cricket team. Very good. I thought there'd be a double bluff there, but that was very good. It is England cricket. And here is the last one. Anyone know which team this is? Anyone? Eleanor, do you want to guess? It's not golf. Good guess, but it's not. Oh, sailing. Very good. Very. Do you know which sailing team it is? Uh, it's America's Cup. It's it? America's Cup. Yep. So it's, um, American team. Oh, come on, I'm so hoping no one gets this. It is Team USA, but there's a name, a sponsor's name. Anyone know? No? Do you know? What is it? Oxford. Close, actually, but it's not Oxford, but you get half a point for that. I think I have defeated you all. I'm so happy. I've been trying for years to find a question that no one in the church knows. It's actually um, called Oracle. Team USA. It's just the sponsor's name. Oracle Team USA. 
and it's a sailing one. So no one, Jasper, you are the winner because you were the only person who came dressed in the right kit today. So well done. <laughs> Round of applause for Jasper. Do you want to go and have a seat? Okay, and this is the other question, which might be the hardest ones of all. What do those four teams have in common? What is the link between Liverpool Football Club, New England Patriots, England Cricket, and USA Team Oracle? Faris, what do you think it is? They are all sports teams. That's a, that is true, but it's not the answer I was looking for, Joel. They have to work together. That's also true, but it's not the answer I was looking for. Martha, do you want to shout out? Winning. They did all win, but it's not the answer I'm looking for. Larry? is the right answer. Oh, you were at the last service, weren't you? Oh. For a minute, I thought I'd been stumped, but um, A, she's my daughter, and B, she was here when she heard me say this a while before. They have all made an enormous comeback. Liverpool fans, could you ever forget the miracle of Istanbul? Champions League final, 2005. 3-0 down at half-time. The AC Milan players are high-fiving each other because they think they've won, and Liverpool came back and won on penalties. England cricket team, 1981. I know that's a long before many people in the church were born. Um, that's how far you have to go for a great England win. England following on. Do you remember? Ian Botham scores 149, and then we bowl them out and win. At one point in that match, England were 500 to 1 to win the game, and they came back and won. New England Patriots won the Super Bowl in 2017 after being 28-3 down. They won 34-28 in overtime. And the America's Cup, you have to forgive me because I'm a sailor. Um, the America's Cup in 2013, New Zealand were beating Team Oracle USA by 8-1 in a first to nine competition. And the Americans came back and won 9-8. So they all have in, co in common coming back against huge adversity when everything seemed to be lost. Now, I used to compete in international sport myself, and I find it absolutely fascinating in that moment where a team is just about dead and buried, to look at the way people respond. Now, you get some teams, and they start fighting with each other, or they give up, or they all announce their retirement, and they basically stop fighting, and they give up. And some individual people will start, they'll sulk, they'll blame anyone or anything except for themselves. And yet, in exactly the same situation, you find other people and their response is, we are never giving up. We're going to keep on fighting. We're not giving up hope that we might be able to win. And in fact, in that America's Cup example, the skipper of the American boat, Jimmy Spittle, sat in a news conference at 8-1 down, best of nine, and they sort of all said to him, well, bad luck. And he said, we haven't lost. We haven't lost. And he said, imagine if we win from here. Then what a story that would be. Winston Churchill, you might remember, went uh, back to his old school in Harrow, not very far from here, and he gave a talk, and it was only nine words long. I think some of you are wishing this talk was only nine words long, but S Churchill's word, uh, words were, never give in, never give in, never give in. What is it that makes some people never lose hope? God is really interested in what you do when you're under pressure and what I do. God is far more interested in the kind of person we are than all our achievements and all of that. And as, as a father, I can relate to that. I don't mind what my children grow up to do, but I hope that they will be good people, that they will be true, that they will never give up hope. I don't know, another sporting example, if you've been following the Australian cricket team and the, the cheating that's gone on, the ball tampering, really interesting to me that in those... You know, watching them and that the remorse of those players has been very hard to watch, hasn't it? But the thing that struck me most is that Steve Smith, the Australian captain, the thing, the moment where he completely broke down was not about the cheating, it was not about his teammates, it was not about the country, it was that he'd let down his parents. Because he knows that to them the most important thing is the kind of person he is. And God feels like that about us. So I want to ask you, what do you do when you're losing? What do you do when it feels like all hope is gone? What do you do in those moments that are so painful that you think, well, it's finished? When the Sabbath was over, 
Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. These three women were three of Jesus' closest friends. And when all hope seemed lost, they carried on doing what they knew was right. And they went to the tomb to find Jesus. And they became witnesses of the most extraordinary event that has ever happened in the whole history of the whole of the universe. Because when they arrived at the grave, the stone was rolled away. And where they expected to find the body of their dead friend, there was nothing there but a messenger saying, he's not here, he's risen. And they became witnesses to an event so earth-shattering, so rule-breaking, an intervention in human history that was so colossal that now, 2,000 years later, over 2 billion of us are attending church services today and telling this story and remembering it. 2 billion people, 2,000 years later. How is that possible? Well, maybe there really was a life released on that day that is still reverberating around the world. The resurrection of Jesus was such a big event that it changed the way we measure time. Did you know before Jesus raised from the dead, time in all cultures was measured in a circle? Whether it's Hebrew or Chinese or whatever. So you know in the Chinese pattern, there are different animals. Is it 14? And it goes around in a circle. And that's the way that everyone thought of time. But when Jesus rose from the dead, we started to change the way. And now we count the years from when Jesus rose, or roughly, to now. And we keep on counting. Why? Why that change? Well, the answer is that when Jesus rose from the dead, it gave a hope that the world is heading somewhere. That we're not just trapped in an endless round of good and bad, good and bad, good and bad. I don't know about you, sometimes when things go really well in my life, I think, oh, something bad's about to happen. Or when things go really bad, you think, oh, nothing good's ever going to come. Well, that's the kind of traces of the old way of thinking. But in the new way of thinking, because Jesus has been raised from the dead, nothing can ever be the same again. We are not trapped in a cycle. But eternity has broken in. There is no Groundhog Day if you know Jesus because there is hope that whatever happens, however bad your relationships get, however many mistakes you make, however trapped you might feel, however disastrous the news is, whatever happens to you at work or with your friends or at school, even if you're going to die, there is hope. There is hope. There is always hope hope because let's face it death is the worst thing that can happen to anyone and if Jesus has shown that death is not the end that there is hope beyond the grave then there's hope for you and for me a few weeks ago someone from this church died her name was Rita she was a very private person not that many people knew her but I got to know her quite well because two years ago she was diagnosed with a terminal disease and given six months to live and she actually lived for two years. And I spent quite a lot of time with her over those two years. And we would talk together and pray. And the thing that astonished me about Rita is that she never denied what was going to happen. She spoke quite honestly about the fact that she knew she was going to die. But she never, ever gave up hope. She always, always held on to that trust that death was not going to be the end. And what it meant was she died in the most remarkable way. And I went to see her in her hospice just a few days before she died. And she was peaceful and full of joy. She'd suffered so badly with this disease and what it had done to her body. But she reached the very end of her life still holding on to the hope of the resurrection. And I saw with my own eyes what a difference it can make. And I said to myself, if Rita can hope like that... When she's about to die, how much more hope should there be for me when I'm going through a bad week at work? Or when I've just had an argument with a friend? Or when things seem very dark? We've heard already from Jake and Daniela about how their lives 
have been turned around and about how the light can shine in the darkness and bring hope. And so I want to say to you, whatever's going on in your life now, when you feel like you've reached the point where it's all fallen apart, where there is no hope left, think about Jesus and his resurrection. And you will discover that the greatest comeback of all time can be yours as well. However steep the odds might seem. Because for those who keep on trusting in God, they will never, ever be disappointed. Let's close our eyes for a moment and pray. Lord God, you know us. We can't hide from you. We might try and pretend, but you know us. We're an open book to you. Our lives are on show before you, and you know all the good and bad that we've done. You know all the, uh, all the, the things that we are proud of and want other people to know about. You know the things that we are desperately ashamed of and that we desperately hope will never be found out. You see it all, and still you love us. Thank you that you look at our character and you want us to be people like your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would plant in our hearts the hope that will never, ever let us down. Help us to remind ourselves day by day that in you there is always hope. And I pray especially for any person here today who has maybe even given up hope or is close to it, I pray that the Spirit of God would breathe upon you, that you would hear these words and find fresh hope. I pray that in looking at Jesus, you would find the way and the truth and the life. I pray that in trusting him, you will find a new way to live and a way that will always lead you upwards. Father, we pray for those places in the world that have given up hope, for Syria, but for the many places where there are conflicts or pain, for those who've lost loved ones. We pray that your light would continue to shine and that you would use us and all your people to be beacons of hope in a dark and troubled world. We pray all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.